It has been a minute since I have sat in front of you all doing a video in this format and I'm really happy to be back. If you are new here, my name is Autumn and I am the Redheaded Witch. As I said in my last video, things have been just super stressful. Um, I have been working on this really big project that is coming to a close end and it's bittersweet because I've really enjoyed the process. Now I find myself kind of um, revising and just kind of like rethinking and reframing and there's just been a lot of just kind of going back and doing some tweaks and everything like that before it's all concluded. Like I said, it's bittersweet. I have really enjoyed like looking within and just being able to express myself and to share that in a very unique way. And I'm really excited to share more about that in the upcoming months, hopefully, <laughs> if everything goes planned, um, but we'll see. But since we have been back from our little getaway from San Juan Island, which I did a vlog about in my last video, um, we have just really welcomed winter into the Pacific Northwest. It seems like at the snap of a finger, winter was here. While the world around me is starting to fall asleep, I actually find myself more awake and alive during this time, even though I still remain kind of in a hermit mode and introverted, but I just, it really does feed my spirit. Because a lot of us don't experience winter that way, sometimes we can get in sort of a funky routine. Um, you know, the days are so much shorter. Some of us are waking up when it's still dark, getting home and it's dark. And then oftentimes a lot of us will fall into kind of like a slump and entering more of this hermit mode. And there are individuals who suffer from seasonal depression. But when we try to create a magical routine in our daily lives, that can look a lot different during the winter. Within my own personal practice, I find myself incorporating more of a hearth witchcraft routine. And that essentially is a huge focus of the home. There is so much magic within the home of the witch. To me, the home is a reflection of the witch's heart. When you walk into a witch's home, you can immediately see what brings them joy and what things are important to them. It's not only a magical place for the witch, but it is also a safe space for the witch. And therefore, it reflects some sort of comfort and, you know, it's a safe haven for them to retreat to after a long day. It is where they find peace from the outside world. While things may be chaotic on the outside or stressful, they know that they can, when they are home, that they can find that solitude and peace. And so much magic is found within the home by creating magic from mundane tasks, such as in you know cooking in the kitchen or cleaning or even just like relaxing and even sleeping. There's just an opportunity to make the smallest thing magical. One of the things that we may find ourselves doing during this time is focusing on herbal crafting, creating the witch's cabinet for the winter season. I myself just did my fire cider for the season and it is just now ready for me to strain it and incorporate into our 
wellness routine. There are other tinctures that you may be able to create if you have the herbal knowledge and I'm assuming that you have some interest if you're a witch which is naturally may follow some sort of herbal path because of their relationship with their place around them. Just getting to know plant allies. For me in particular, I have really connected with the hawthorn tree because I am surrounded by so many. You can create a tonic with the hawthorn berries or also use it in a tea blend, which is really great for the heart. But there are other like winter seasonal herbs and spices that I like to use during this time. For example, pine needles are actually really great as a tea. Not only is pine great for strength and vitality, it's also great for fighting off any colds and also brings a lot of comfort, especially when you incorporate it incorporate it with like star anise or cinnamon. I also naturally love to use cinnamon during this time of year. The smell always reminds me of fall and winter and it's also really great for resilience. I'll incorporate it into like baked goods or simmer pots or even just like tea blend. Lastly, rose hips is one that I have just started to associate with. Um, I'm really excited about it. I actually found some when we were in San Juan and I have heard many great things about rose hips, but I've never really come across any. And so now I am surrounded by them um, because where I live, rose, like wild roses are just so abundant. And so from there, rose hips are now so abundant during this time of year. Rose hips are really great for the skin. Um, they can be used for like facial toners and they can also be consumed as like a syrup or like another tincture that you can make. There are other things that you can make, for example, I also love to use my garlic infused honey to help boost my immune system and to fight off any sort of bacteria. It's also pretty comforting to experiment with like some tea blends if you are a fan of tea in any sort of way. Now is the time to consider making it a little bit more of a magical intention. Whether you craft your own tea blends or not, there are so many tea blends um, available at your local grocery store. Some of them range from like really citrusy to floral or just like simply black tea or green tea. And each tea blend has its own correspondence magically and medicinally. Right now I have a like kind of like a citrus blend tea, which is really great for providing me a little bit more energy throughout the day if I feel like I'm more of an, of an a slump so if I don't necessarily want a lot of caffeine because I've had a lot of caffeine already um, I might go ahead and enjoy some of this like citrus tea blend this particular citrus tea blend does incorporate orange and knowing this I always set the intention to bring joy throughout the day Another element that we can incorporate to hearth witchcraft is home decor and paying attention to incorporating things that really bring us comfort. So for us, what really brings us comfort is having some natural elements into our home. And because we are spending more time inside, we wanted to incorporate the outside in. So whether that is foraging flowers around you or foraging some natural elements like pine cones or like um, you know, leaves and branches and just kind of like creating some sort of floral arrangement for your home. Now, because it is almost Yule here as it is uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, we ended up finding some natural garlands. And so we found like this blend of cedar and Douglas fir. So instead of having fake garlands, which we have some still, but we really wanted to incorporate some natural elements to kind of bring the forest that we love to explore inside our home. So we incorporated some of this natural garland in our living room space to make the space more comfortable, especially because that's where we spend a lot of our like time together watching movies or reading together or playing video games. Then we also incorporate it like around our um, door frame within our bedroom. So it really does kind of feel like we're entering into this enchanted forest. Just having nature in your home is just brings so much joy and so much magic and it has it gives off this aroma of like pine and like 
winter wonderland and it has really uplifted our spirit. Now we can also create some other garlands with like dried fruits um, such as dried oranges and apples. Oranges are great for once again incorporating some joy and happiness throughout your day and then apples are really great for protection and love and connection. So drying apples and oranges and stringing them together to create a garland is another way that we can bring a little bit more magic into our space. Because now we do have a gas fireplace, I like to have a lot of focus around that space because it is the center of our home, it's within our living room and where we often find ourselves connecting. So I like to place a lot of emphasis on that space and how can I incorporate more uh, magical elements there. I think one of the most obvious ways that we can incorporate magic throughout our daily routine during the winter season is kitchen witchery. Kitchen witchery is one of my personal favorites because I think it is just so versatile and it can be as simple or intricate as we want uh, depending on the recipes that we want to use. It can be incorporated from our breakfast to snacks that we have throughout the day to the beverages that we make in the kitchen to our dinner that we share with our family. By using magical herbs, spices, and other ingredients like fruits and vegetables, we can extend the magic from within ourselves to the food that we prep that we then share with our family family and also nourish our own bodies with. During this time of year, I try to kind of like take on sort of like some sort of like skill or hobby. And this year I was really inspired to start leaning into needle crafting. Right now I'm just the beginning stages of embroidery, but I've been really enjoying that time. It's something that, you know, allows me to work with my hands and allows me to kind of get into like a meditative state. I found that this interest was really inspired when I started to work with a specific deity. This is a relationship that I have had for some time but it's starting to deepen even more and this was just one of the skills that I decided to kind of take up on for the winter season as an offering. I think the last thing when it comes to creating a magical daily routine during the winter season is for me, I often find this to be an emphasis on self-care. We see that the world around us is starting to sleep. This is really represented by the days going shorter and darkness is upon us more. There's a kind of like sleepiness, there's a quietness to it. I find this almost to be an invitation to more of kind of like the inner depths of ourselves. We do find ourselves spending more time inside, which is why I think that there is an emphasis on hearth witchery during this time of year. I think that this is also an opportunity to create small rituals for ourselves and really tending to our own spirit. So whether that is you know, if you have a bath, you can do some bath rituals specific for an intention that you have, whether that is loving yourself, finding peace within yourself, finding joy, protecting yourself, or just cleansing yourself, you know, shedding that layer from the, you know, the calendar year that we are about to end. I also find myself um, having an emphasis on not only a focus of my emotional well-being because that has been such a an important part of my life throughout this you know the last few years and going to therapy and I have come to a point in my own healing journey where um, you know I am not need I'm not finding myself needing to go to therapy um, on a weekly basis anymore and it's not to say that I don't need therapy anymore but I'm just saying like for me personally because it was such a focus and I had put in so much effort and the effort that I had put in, been putting in the last few years has been really reflective of my daily life. I have now kind of found myself paying more attention to my physical well-being and my body because that is such a huge part of kind of connecting like your heart and your mind and like where everything is. And so not only that, but I've been noticing like my body is actually healing. Maybe I should say like kind of like a trigger warning with like conversation around weight if that's a sensitive subject for you. For me and my healing journey when I was at kind of like 
a really traumatic experience. I actually found myself not really having much of an appetite because I was storing a lot of the experience in my stomach and therefore I wasn't having an appetite. I would go all day without eating and it wouldn't even phase me. Where I'm at in my own healing journey, I am starting to incorporate more of a routine in my meals, making sure that I am nourishing my body as much as I have been nourishing my heart and my mind. I've actually found myself, you know, growing stronger, you know, feeling better about myself, like having the energy because I actually had breakfast and not just coffee, being able to maintain that energy throughout the day because I am feeding my body throughout the day. I also find myself like tending to like other elements of my body for example like actually getting a massage and because I have held so much tension in my shoulders that I have so many knots and so I finally decided to take myself <laughs> to a massage therapy appointment and get that looked at and start kind of developing this routine of really focusing on nourishing my body and making sure that that you know is feeling good too. A leap for me and being able to notice when things aren't feeling very like good and actually going to go do something about it like now I finally have a chiropractor appointment and I've been needing that for years with that being said I think that we often find ourselves seeing and noticing things of ourselves and our bodies and our mind that perhaps needing some more nourishment and tending to. And the thing is, it's like not everyone's routine is going to look the same. And when I was thinking about this video of like, oh, how can I tell people to create a routine? Like ultimately everyone's is going to look different because everyone's schedule is different everyone's life is different you know you may be someone who works a 90 a nine to five you might be someone who doesn't work at all and you have children at home or maybe you you know work part-time or maybe you have you know a night shift everyone's schedule is so different and so for me to sit here and tell you how to create a routine i think is little difficult because I don't know what your schedule is. I don't know and I don't want to tell you how to do that either. But my hope is that you have a little bit of inspiration behind how you can create the things that you are already doing throughout your day a little bit more magical. There are just so many opportunities to finding magic within the home during the winter season. With that being said, I do hope you found some inspiration in this video to take into consideration for the wintry days ahead. And as always, thank you so much for being here and I will see you in the next one.